Hey, hello, your Psych Health Wolf Gorlick, a few minutes riffing on IT and IT security. Uh, today, looking at managing privilege access for developers. Um, I missed a couple of videos. Uh, I've got this technical difficulty called daylight <laughs> with, uh, with me being in Michigan and Michigan being in December and being in daylight savings time. Ah, it's dark when I drive to work, it's dark when I drive home. Uh, it's a lame excuse, but it is what it is, right? Those time windows keep eluding me. And I could set up a studio at home, but I also got this other problem called December holidays, meaning there's like something going on every night, ever. Uh, but that does have me thinking about time windows and the importance of time windows, right? And here's a tip for you. Uh, you need to balance support and agility and development uh, against least privilege, segregation of duties, and these types of things, right? To minimize the chance of insider threat, to be compliant with any number of standards like Sarbanes-Oxy and everything else. Uh, and to do that, there's a few different ways you can do it. Now, I'm gonna give you four. Uh, four sounds like a good number. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with four. There's more, I'm sure. Hit me up in comments and tell me what I missed or or tweet at me and, uh, and tell me that uh, one of these doesn't work. Of course, number one is what everyone does ever, which is, oh, we'll just make all the developers admin on the IT side because that's DevOps, right? They're, they're operators. <laughs> and that's so oftentimes what we see. The analysts have access, the developers have access. And there's a good point for that. There's a good reason for it because something goes wrong Somebody needs to jump in and fix it. You don't want to be waiting for permissions. Number two is, you may have a special support role. That support role has all the elevated privileges. That support role has everything they need. And when a problem occurs, you add the user to that support role. Now, within Windows, that means they have to log off and log back on because role-based uh, authentication happens at login and all those roles are uh, enumerated and added to their um, ace when, or the ace for the group I think it's added to their list when they log in but point is that's number one two create a group number three is create a user right a specific user uh, that has access now when does that developer or set of analysts have access to those users? Or when do those developers or set of users have access to those groups? Could be on demand, there's a problem, there's a change ticket, I'm gonna give you that access. Um, could be by schedule, I'm on call and I have, you know, all the rights in the world on the third Thursday of the month. Um, it could be on escalation. The escalation process automatically tags people in. There's a few different ways to do that. Automated, of course. Uh, this is important because you don't want to be bogged down in trying to get into that group or have someone have to approve it and then the help desk and the ticket sitting and meanwhile the user's yelling and you know, you don't want to be stuck in all that. So another fourth way I'm starting to see, and I think this one's the kind of uh, no, new and novel way. Another fourth way I'm seeing is credential um, archival, right, and retrieval. Something like CyberArk, where you've got those creds, the credentials for the troubleshooting account. And I, the DevOps guy, the developer, can request those creds, log in and do what I need to do, and then give them up when I'm done, right? I think that's kind of an interesting approach, because that way the developers can do it whenever they need to. You don't necessarily have all the steps going on with the help desk and whatnot. There's still an audit trail. Um, so the chance of anyone doing anything inappropriate is reduced because you have a minimum window of when they're inside. So those are some of the ways I'm seeing it being done these days. Uh, again, what about you? What are you seeing in the field? What works? What doesn't? Hit me up in, uh, in comments or social media. Cheers.